disgraced Dundee surgeon who harmed patients in his care could be extradited back to Scotland. Professor Sam Eljamel was suspended from NHS Tayside in 2013 and is now thought to be in Libya. Health Secretary Michael Matheson will set out plans for an investigation tomorrow after serious concerns were raised in an internal review. He said extradition could be used depending on a police investigation. Lynn Rankin has more. I live with permanent pins and needles in my hands and my feet and a throbbing sensation that can only be described as you just hit your thumb with a hammer. Thirteen years ago, John Grant had surgery to remove a protruding disc in his spine. The operation carried out by Sam Eljamel caused irreparable nerve damage and a life of constant pain. I immediately knew there was problems. I complained to him that it wasn't right and it was just rebuffed. And I saw that other surgeon was told that yeah, your spine, parts of your spinal column had been severed. Um, nothing you can do about it. And I, that's when I left, thinking, well, this is my life. We need a public inquiry! Why? John joined a growing group of patients outside the Scottish Parliament. The blood may be fake, but their pain is real, as they continue to push for a public inquiry. El Jamel was under indirect supervision when he operated on Jules Rose. He removed her tear duct instead of a brain tumour. The following day, he was suspended. Jules leads a group of patients who have refused the Health Secretary's offer of an independent review. Well, Professor El Jamel has been performing surgery on patients since 1995, so that's 18 years. So our concern is how many more, there are thousands of patients out there that have been severely butchered also by Professor El Jamel and at NHS Tayside been turning a blind eye. The Health Secretary today said El Jamel could be extradited back to Scotland from Libya, where he's currently working. A review by NHS Tayside released last week criticised the decision to initially place him under indirect supervision instead of suspending him. The internal report said he may have operated on more than 100 patients while he was being investigated. Michael Matheson says it raises serious concerns. There are aspects of information in there which are new to the Scottish Government, uh, which I'm surprised that we're now hearing about now. Uh, but alongside that, I also want to make sure that we have a process that patients feel that they can get answers about their own individual cases as well. Which is why tomorrow I'll set out in Parliament a process that will allow us to do that, to make sure there's a very thorough and detailed investigation into how NHS Tayside have handled this matter. With 146 patients now involved, this group is growing. So too is their fight for answers. Lynn Rankin, STV News. Strikes in Scotland schools are being called off next week, but more widespread disruption is likely at the end of the month. The biggest council workers union, Unison, is expected to announce dates in 24 local authorities tomorrow. But council leaders are expected to make an improved pay offer next week. Our political editor, Colin Mackay, has been following this. Colin, talk us through the developments. Well, this seems to have been dragging on and on. So firstly, there is some good news for families that the GMB union has called off two strike days next week. But the bad news is that all three local government unions unite. Unison is the biggest one. And the GMB look like walking out for three days at the end of this month. Now, Unison, as I say, is the biggest of the three. It has a strike mandate in 24 councils around the country, including all the big cities, Aberdeen and Dundee, and actually in Highland as well. Now, they look set to tell councils tomorrow that, they, that their members will be walking out on the 26th, 27th and 28th of September. That's just after the September weekend in some parts of the country. And they, they reckon that that could close 1,868 schools right across Scotland. And Colin, is there any way to stop this action? Well, council leaders met yesterday. They expected to make an improved offer to the unions at a meeting next week, although that meeting hasn't actually been officially called yet. Now, the unions are looking for at least an extra 1%. That would cost about £100 million to make it even worthwhile putting to their members for another vote. The unions already have an incredibly strong mandate from their members. The, the, between, between the three unions... 
not just 24, it's 26 councils out of 32 around the country where they have that mandate. Now, they want COSLA to ask the Scottish Government to ask for more money to improve the pay deal, just like happened last year. Now, unless there is a better offer, you're looking at strikes, closing schools right around Scotland at the end of this month. OK, Colin Mackay at Holyrood, thank you.